Hey everyone, I'm Rachel. And I'm Jen, and welcome to Devilish Bookworms, the podcast. Where we read and review books and release episodes every Tuesday. This week we have Anastasia by Sophie Lark. Yay! We all know the story of Anastasia Romanoff, Grand Duchess of Russia. Or do we? Anastasia doesn't like being called princess, but she can't ignore her standing in society. Her days are filled with parties, games, and making memories with her close and loving family while the rest of her kingdom is at war. When word of surrender reaches the castle, Anastasia believes that it will be the start of Grand New World. Unfortunately for the Romanovs, a monster has infiltrated their lovely life, and he is set on destroying them all. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so, Rachel, why don't we dive right in? <laughs> so I feel like I should let everyone know that I am just getting over being sick, and I'm really sorry. My voice might sound funky. It might sound cooler. I don't know. Personally, I love having sick voice. I know that we've discussed that before. But um, if you're like, ew, Rachel, clear your throat. I'm like, ah, I've tried. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this book is by Sophie Lark. And uh, I knew I knew that name. Like, when you picked it, I was like, I swear I know that name. I swear I do. Um, I do. Well, I did. Um, I have two of her books. On my physical TBR, I have There Are No Saints and There Is No Devil on my physical TBR. Like, I'm looking at the books right now. And, uh... Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, didn't we read a book by her before? And then I was like, no, I don't think so. Yeah. You know something? Those are also on my TBR. (laughs) Because I I was looking it up as you were saying her name. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember those covers. I yeah the covers are rad honestly the covers are part of why why I got the I go don't judge a book by its cover no I must love for a nice cover um hell yeah I really want to get to them but I have so many books like we you know I don't even have to say it. y'all know we have so many books to read <laughs> um what yeah I'm drowning in my TBR it's drowning. ridiculous <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's true. And then like and then you have to like reprioritize some because it's like, well, I really want to read this book. So you like shift them around and then, you know, I have let's see, I have one, two, three. I have three books, three physical books in front of um what is it? There are no sinners. Oh, Sophie's. Yeah, the the one with the white cover. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> I'm so blind. Um, I'll get to it eventually. So Anastasia, however, I'm actually interested now because those were in like the dark romance section. And mm-hmm. after reading this book, like there was there were intimate scenes in this book, but they weren't like graphic. Um, and so I'm interested to see those like those books you know yeah Uh, um so when we picked this book i was wondering whether or not it was going to be like a retelling of the disney version or if it was going to be like the actual story of anastasia i'm gonna like i'm gonna gonna try and say her name and i'm sure i'm gonna butcher it um because it's not just anastasia romanov it's anastasia (laughs) nikolay nikolaevna of Russia, member of the House of Romanov, as according to Google. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's kind of like, you know what? It's it's kind of like an amalgamation of all of them. So like, or maybe even not the Disney version, but I've never seen the Disney version, so I have no frame of reference, really. Um, this one is kind of like, there's so much history in it. There's so much and we're going to get into that later there's so much history in it but then it's also it also has like um all like a lot of the things that people used to say or like the the hushed whispers about Rasputin um 
they also brought that into it too so like there's magical elements and then there's like where do loyalties truly lie and you know mixed in with the with the history there's a lot to this book (laughs) hence why it's like 849 pages (laughs) (laughs) yeah it was a chunky one just like me I hate you. I just I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it really it was a big boy this week. And let me tell you, I didn't know if it was going to end or how it was going to end. And the okay. It's going forever. <laughs> it it did kind of go on forever. But at the same time, the one thing that I loved was right in the beginning um sophie puts in this is my fantasy of the happy ending anastasia deserved Mm. not because she was a romanoff but because she was a human i want all of you to have the happy ending you deserve and i just was like okay so i'm already like a thousand percent here for this because i already know it's going to be a be a better ending than what i remember so I like it. Yeah, absolutely. I always thought that it was so like beautifully tragic, the story of the Romanovs. And I'm saying this as someone who did not live back then. I did not, I don't live, you know, there now, really, honestly, but <laughs> it's kind of the same from what I've gathered through reading different things and um going down many a uh, midnight rabbit hole into the Romanovs um like the mother and father just loved each other so much and it was almost like it kind of reminded me of um kind of like the Kristoff kingdom in Haiti and like how it was like the family and and also like uh, Marie Antoinette, which is also mentioned in the book, and how it's like their love and their family was a was the most important thing, but also like their people were dying and their people were starving, you know, and mm-hmm. um, like it was just, and this is me saying this from no like actual like, again haven't been there, didn't live, don't live there now, whatever. Um, I always thought it was just like. Like it was a family that loved each other so much, and um, then they, then the revolution happens, and then they all are murdered. And it was like I don't know, it's tragic. Yeah. And that's not to say obviously that it that it should or should not have happened. It's kind of like you know if you have a heinous dictator and you're allowed and you're able to go back into um, time when that heinous dictator is a baby and it's like do i kill the baby you know it's like you know what it's going to grow up into but also it's a baby who hasn't had a chance at life yet so it's one of those things that i'm not saying that it should or should not have happened it's just sad that it it's just sad (laughs) (laughs) yeah there's a lot of ethics that you just rolled around there. <laughs> I know. I know. I watched The Good Place a lot. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> like, I know you watched that, but has it been recently? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. Makes perfect sense now. I go through these phases where, like, I read a T. Or, I, I don't know what just happened in my mouth. <laughs> I watch a TV show and like to go to sleep. And so like it has been for the past few months, it's been Gilmore Girls. And what will happen is like I, I put it on and then it just plays until I wake up. And then the next day I, I put it on and then it just plays until I wake up. I use up a lot of energy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, planet. But um, so when I get tired of guilt, you know, like Gilmore Girls, I switch it to something else, which I did. I I had played Gilmore Girls for months, and so I was like, I guess it's time for The Good Place again. And then I finished The Good Place, and then it was Wednesday. And what am I going to let you know? I'm going to be honest, it's probably Gilmore Girls again. I don't remember. Oh, no, it's Gossip Girl. Okay. I can understand Talk that. Talk about because, your tangents. Well, 
I I absolutely understand that though because I go from Murder She Wrote to Downton Abbey to uh possibly sometimes an Agatha Christie like Miss Marple or Hercule Poirot or freaking uh yeah there's a few yeah <laughs> but lately it's been Downton Abbey <laughs> you watch all the like. <laughs> <laughs> like the respectable TV shows. I'm like, yeah, I just finished Wednesday and now I'm on Gossip Girl. <laughs> I love how you think that I watch respectable shows. I don't know. I've never seen any of them. I haven't seen uh, a single thing you just mentioned. You've never watched Out and Abbey? No. I watched oh the my. first episode. It seemed, it seemed really boring, so I stopped. Oh, no. You know but I have watched a thousand times. Absolutely fabulous. <laughs> I haven't even made through the whole show yet. It's I don't funny. Know how it's gold. <laughs> but I don't know. I just I love the whole old school like proper lady but they're not being proper type of deal. Yeah. But yeah. You know, that's just you know. me. <laughs> Oh, as Jen said before, we went on this long tirade <laughs> about our, <laughs> our about our to go to sleep watching habits um so it is like there are parts of the book that are drawn drawn out like it is a it is a chunky boy um chapter i would say chapter 34 is really where it like pops off and like that's when she kind of like loses everything and but even though chapter 34 is when it all happens like i adore this book because we've spent so much time from and i'll i'll like break down a little bit more of the synopsis in a second but like we've spent so much time with these characters and so much time with the story that like when her world is shattered and she's like in the depths of despair we are, I was in the depths of despair you know what I mean like I felt like I had lost everything and then when she gets a glimmer of um a glimmer of happiness back in it wasn't like with a smaller book where or not not a, not necessarily a smaller book because you can have these dynamics with small books but with some other books that we've read um whereas it's like they're on top of the world then it's really sad for like maybe a chapter and then like they're on top of the world again it's like oh phew okay good we're we're back on track this book it was almost like when she went through the depths of despair like we were there with her and then when when things got a little bit happier again we had like we feel happy but we're still heartbroken over what's happened to her so like it's layered just like it would be for her you know like it's uh it's like if you rush in and say like these characters mean a lot and now they're dead without giving us any scenes like with the characters and spending time together you don't like allow us to get to know the characters but like I really cared when things happened to her yeah and that was the case when we were um reading when the moon hatched we I wasn't going to say any names, but yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, no, we didn't care about when the best friend died, but this time we cared about almost every character that happened to have some sort of misfortune. I mean, even the woman that killed herself, I felt bad. I like, I was like, oh my God, she, she literally jumped in front of a train. Like, that's so horrible. Like, I wanted to cry. Yeah, that was awful. It really was, but I mean, the best friend in that book couldn't care less. <laughs> the, but I mean, as you said, we we literally spend so much time with these different characters. We go through almost every stage of their life with them. So it's like, even though there might have been like a brief lapse in time, like I, I think there was a like a 10 year jump at one point or a five year jump or whatever it was, but mm -hmm like even that little bit of a, a time period where it it just seemed like a blink of an eye we we still felt like we went through everything along with them which was right. really wonderfully done made us invest more in the the whole thing oh a hundred percent and if i i need i like i need to be invested 
Yeah, for sure. So when we are introduced to Anastasia, she is, um, it's pretty much like normal life for her. Um, her father and her uncle were like off at war and then um, they, the people that they were fighting against um, said that they were going to surrender. And so her father sent her uncle back to get her little brother and her little brother was next in line um, for the throne. And so his, her father was like, I want him to see this. And so Anastasia was like, but I want to come. And everyone's like, no, 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 you can't. So Anastasia goes and um, hides in like the cart or whatever. And then like goes, she's like a stowaway. <laughs> Honestly, I love the way that they she did that um, because it's like everybody else is saying goodbye. The um, the nannies pretty much got her eyes on Anastasia and then she gets distracted by someone else real quick and she just kind of like sidesteps right into the cart. And <laughs> I was like, ooh, that little girl is sneaky as fuck. And I'm like, are they going to catch her? Are they? And then, no, they never did. <laughs> Not until she was already on her way. Right? Like, she kept herself and her bird hidden. Uh, which I didn't understand. How do you keep a bird from chirping? And while, well, while dogs are right there and, you know, I don't know. Yeah. So Anastasia was gifted a, a hawk from her uncle. And which was so sweet because it was almost like she was like, oh, I'm just going to get another dumb girly present. And here he comes in with a hawk. I, mean, I thought it was so sweet. Um, and she names the bird Artemis. And can we for a moment just talk about, first of all, there's so much animal murder, just straight up animal murder in this book. But like Artemis is vicious and not all the animal murder is because of her. But um. A lot of it is. Mm. She's yes. always hunting something. <laughs> Feed me. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> hungry. <laughs> oh my god. She Feed was... me see more. <laughs> oh, it, that's exactly what I kept thinking of too. I need to watch that. <laughs> it's so good. That needs to be on the list. <laughs> Did you know that the chick that played Audrey was part of the Broadway show? no i didn't she was indeed that's awesome i know so while they're there nicholas and um the leader the leader of the cossacks are um signing the treaty and the leader's son whose name is damien tries to kill nicholas the um anastasia's father and i thought it was so sweet like um, when the leader of the Cossacks was like, don't kill my son, don't kill my son. And then he, then Nicholas spared him. I was like, oh, God. I just love dudes sometimes, you know? So I love that he, he actually stepped out of line and tried to kill him though, because he didn't kind of back down from everything just because it was the leader and they were supposed to be signing the treaty. He wanted to do something that he thought it was right although it turned out bad for him he got 10 years or i think it was 10 or 15 years of service that he had to to live out in uh Russia. he became the czar's nephew's ward or brother's ward excuse me and he took him in he had to go to school to learn how to um basically be a soldier there and then after that, he had to spend his time fighting for Russia or Russia. Yeah, so. I want to I want to address that really quick. So in the book, it was Russia. Yes. And in the audio book, it was Russia. Yes. Um, I've always I, but it's Russia. So if there's anyone who's listening who is from Russia, um, can you please explain to me what is happening? So. <laughs> 
the the way that I described or that I that I took it was like in um French, like in American in American <laughs> in English, England is England, right? But in French, England is Angleterre. So is that what it is? Like in Russia, is it really Russia? Can anyone let me know, please? I'm just gonna reach out to Sophie herself and be like <laughs> So honestly, I thought of it as like, uh, um, how do I put this? I I figured it was like to make the slight distinction between the reality and the false, well, not the falsity, the fantasy version that she's portrayed. Plausible but, deniability. <laughs> it's not I mean, Russia. See, it's Russia. <laughs> Well, because there's the element of magic and all that, that's where I think maybe she may have changed it just so it didn't offend Russia, maybe. I mean, they're still very obviously talking about Anastasia. And Russia. <laughs> and Russia. It's very, it's very <laughs> clear that it's Russia. <laughs> uh, just help us out, people. Let's just let yeah. us know. I'm going to call it Russia because I actually love that. It does sound really pretty. Why do we do that? Like if go off tangents. No, no, no. If someone's name is Jose, why do we call him John? Or like if some okay, (laughs) so listen. So like Rachel in Spanish is Raquel, right? But those are two different they're two different words. One is Rachel, one's Raquel. And I get that tree in different language, like it's Arbor in I'm not saying that. It's like there's different things in different languages right like maison mm-hmm. is house in french but it's like i get that but like if something is a name if it's a prop if it's a pronoun why do we change it well my thing is like is it a house is it a condo is it a townhouse is it a two-family like is it a duplex like they're all various names for different types of residential buildings but they all kind of mean the same fucking thing. Okay, but why is my name Raquel and Rachel? You know what I mean? Why is why is my name Hennifer? Okay. That's what I'm saying. No, that's that's exactly what I'm saying. Like I don't understand like translating names because it's a name. You know what I mean? It's either Angleterre say. or England. Well, I cannot help you with that. I, Sorry about I think, this tangent. <laughs> I think you might need a um Jesus. <laughs> well that too, but I was gonna say a uh what is Professor Higgins? He's a uh a linguist? Yes, that's what you need. A linguist. If I if I'm gonna have a linguist, can it be Eric Singer, the guy that does all the wired um That's like accent expert gives a tour of US accents. <laughs> Interesting. Anyway, um <laughs> maybe, maybe I need a linguist. I just don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> so um as Jen was saying, this book does have a lot of magic in it. Um, each person in the Romanov family, not just the Romanov family, but I think everyone in general, or like, because the Cossacks had the, had magic, but I don't think like their servants had magic. Was it just some people? I think it, it was like a, uh, you're either, you either manifest by, I think it was 16 at the latest, or you don't manifest at all. Um, but mm-hmm. most people like the on the lower end only manifested like trivial things. Oh. So a, ser- a servant would maybe be able to do piracy, but or pyromancy, but not necessarily gotcha. very well. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah. Anywho, um. So she was actually, Anastasia was a late bloomer with her magic. And 
when she found her power, she showed it off and like ended up making a big fool of herself. She was, you know what I, I didn't hate it, but it kind of was a bummer. Like they went on and on sometimes about how not pretty she was and and how she'd never be as beautiful as her sisters. Mm -hmm. And then like when she found her magic and then all of a sudden, like she like makes a fool out of herself and everyone's disappointed. I was like, oh, poor freaking Anastasia. Can we talk about that for a second? Because I, as a parent, if my child did something extraordinary that most people couldn't do, I would not be disappointed. Like, I understand she made a mistake, but couldn't you give her part of a win? Like, <laughs> they, they like, basically bashed her. So it's not really it's not really a spoiler so she can time walk and if she was still not very good at it but she was you know better than 90 percent of the people because nobody really had that ability besides her dad and so at one point she's moving these decorative eggs from one cabinet to another and she's got 50 of them all moved and she's or or 48 or 49 whatever it was she has almost all of them moved and she happens to stumble and break all of them but all they could worry about was the fact that they broke they didn't give a shit the fact that she did move 50 of them in under three minutes unlike her father did when he moved 15 in three minutes so i mean they couldn't give her that one moment to be like wow that was super fucking impressive like you just beat your dad's record like you you deserve like an applause for this no no it was just more the fact of you fucked up that was all they were concerned with yeah that bothered me. so like i had a little bit of both feelings like on the one hand like faberge eggs that were handed down through this through the family like those are family heirlooms and she yeah. just destroyed all of them but at the same time like you're right i feel like that i would feel like if i were a parent i would kind of do both i would be like you know yeah congratulations that's awesome we'll talk about that in a second because what the hell you know <laughs> yeah absolutely you have to hold them accountable for their mistakes but at the same time you have to give them the applause when necessary i mean applause applause i'm sorry (laughs) (laughs) your adhd is on another level today (laughs) (laughs) i love it i know you know what's so funny is i always told myself i never wanted to get diagnosed but now like more and more i'm like i don't think there's any more hiding it i don't think (laughs) there's really not (laughs) i am so here for it because i love every minute of it but oh yeah you're fucking adhd for sure oops (laughs) there's nothing to be oops about that because it's fantastic fantastic i mean come on i've been crocheting while we're doing this because I just, I need to keep busy. I'm watching a woman eat falafel. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, There it is, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) The other side to what we do while we're recording. (laughs) Well, I mean, I feel like that's where the, that's when the gems happen is when we're keeping the toddler in our brain occupied with something else. Oh, fucking for real, dude for real (laughs) so i i know that this is about anastasia but i want to talk about damien for a second that poor little ward of of nicholas's brother Uh, (laughs) what like there's so much to say about so much to say (laughs) 
So Damien is, um, he has a power too. His power is, um, he's sort of like a master of death. And so anyone he touches is basically drained of life. And so he and Anastasia can't, even if they weren't like on opposite ends of um, the war, you know, even if they weren't in, so you know, having severe different social standings, like they wouldn't be able to touch each other because if she did, she'd die. <laughs> what a freaking quote unquote gift to get. Oh, I don't know how I would be able to mentally deal with that. Just everything you touch dies. Right? Like plants, animals, people. Yeah. I mean, he literally could have killed his own family type of deal. He did. He killed his mom. Yeah, he did. But I mean, like his his dad. It yeah. just he could have killed everybody. And oh, what a what a horrible like I said, gift. Because it's not like in quotes. Yeah, it, it's not something that you would necessarily want, but it is useful in acts of war. I mean, he definitely used it as an advantage for fighting. But on an everyday level, that it's got to be depressing. Yeah. But at least the one thing that we can say is it really didn't affect him as a person. I think it actually kind of humbled him a little bit more than what everybody else kind of was in this book. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you caught it, but it's like... Actually, well, it was very apparent, so there's no way you didn't catch it. Um, at one point, Don't watch me not have caught it. <laughs> no, you uh, because Anastasia made a big deal about it. Um, because she kept saying, "Why can't you? Why do you always see us as such horrible people? Why do you always see us as your enemy?" Where, uh, especially like when she was trying to make things better for him, he kept snapping at her because she couldn't see. Mm -hmm beyond her own filters and that's something that obviously a lot of us have in real life we just are completely blinded by just what we perceive and that's all that we perceive sure and i think it was really important that damien had this this gift that kind of gave him that sight of seeing things differently everything he touched dies so he has to think about things differently he has to behave differently he has to just experience life different and i think that it helped prove his point in multiple ways when she finally understood what he meant uh when he kept saying that they just they aren't seeing beyond themselves they're not seeing what the people need they're not seeing what anybody else needs mm -hmm. out of them versus what they're giving he was definitely a good character i loved him no that's a great point to make because i feel like that's part of the tragedy of um you know this family in particular from what i've seen on the outside you know um and then the other two I mentioned earlier is because not everyone is meant to be like a leader, you know, mm -hmm. and it's easy to get caught up in the things that you see and, and your life. I think it's incredibly human, you know, not everyone has empathy or not, not everyone is, is that aware and you have to be, if you're, if you're in charge of other people. Right. And it's like, it sucks that, that such a personality flaw is um, can be found in people who are supposed to be leaders because then other people suffer because of it. And that's, that's everything, you know, mm -hmm. like I, on from the outside see like Nicholas as being incredibly devoted to his wife, incredibly devoted to his family, which is they're all fantastic traits that you want in a person. Right but it was to the detriment of his people. And so it's like, if it was, if it just had been someone else, you know, or, or whatever the case may be, I don't want to um, assume that I know everything 
about what <laughs> what would have made the situation better but but you know that's why i feel like some people if they're being blatantly ignorant to the problems around them are intentionally ignorant to the problems around them which i don't know if that's an oxymoron but you know some people just go about their lives and they're they just like turn a blind eye and then some people just don't know because they don't know any better you mm-hmm. know and well that i had a I had a note specifically about that. Um, It's almost like, it's almost like, what would you do if you were in that, in that position? You know, like if you were born a rich duchess and your family was so hated by the people, like you'd be killed if you went against your family because that's treason, treason. And then you'd be killed for sticking by your family because the people hate you. And like, you're also going through other things like being in love, like your first time in love and, and all of the, you know, your the first, especially at, at that age, like she was what, 17 when she died in real life. So like, I couldn't imagine all of the, all the firsts and all, all the crazy things that was going on in her life at the time anyway and then also all the extra stuff that was on it you know Mm -hmm. well and one of the things that was actually said in the book um i want to say it was the grandmother yeah it was the grandmother saying it to anastasia and you know it's funny that it was the grandmother saying it when the father really needed to hear it Um, But she says, be careful what you allow to shape you. Ruling is a responsibility and a heavy one. It's what we owe to the people, not what they owe to us. And I really think he just absolutely understood what it meant to be a ruler. And he, he knew it was more about what everybody else needed, not what somebody, one person needed. Right. The responsibility is just it's overwhelming as a leader but i mean not everybody's good at leading yeah i can imagine some of the some of the saddest loneliest you know people are probably the best leaders because yep. what they want and what they need is come second to what the nation needs or, or you know what their family needs or whatever yeah Someone that's got an out outside perspective usually has a solution versus the one that's been staring at the problem the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm <sighs> I'm really glad that Anastasia had Damien in the book. I loved, I yeah. loved their dynamic. I mean, even though that they, they couldn't touch each other, like, um, they still had like an incredible re- like relationship, you know. Hmm. They really did. And I love the fact that they really didn't... They they started out as technically enemies. But <laughs> every, t- every time that they, they saw each other or wrote to each other, even though they would butt heads, um, they were just so emphatic about trying to get the other one to see their point of view and Mm -hmm. that's hugely important to to not only see that your interest point of view but at the same time like if you're going to be hard-headed about it like i love that they were so passionate about what they believe was the right thing yeah, they were they were they were very much able to convey their opinions, their point of view and their perspective while also listening to the other sides, even if they didn't like it, even if Damien said something that Anastasia didn't want to hear. And of course he did, you know, and even if Anastasia needed him to accept things that he didn't want to accept, he, you know, like there was give and take on both ends. And it's so good to see something like that in books because we don't see it in real life anymore you know what I mean like we can't even we can't even disagree on like (laughs) right like like soda flavors you know and but like Mm. they I think that the way um the author did it in the book was so it was messy of course because differing opinions are messy 
<clears throat> but it was also graceful and I, th- I think it was beautiful in how the compromise was done and I love that she was able to convey so much passion and just the amount of ethics that it should take a leader to think about in just yeah obviously it wasn't a short book but in a short amount of time it's not like something that she spent a thousand pages on she she put brief moments in a a handful of chapters to give you the idea this is the right way this is the right way this is the wrong way this is how it should be done and it was beautifully done absolutely Oh man, I love that. I love a love at first sight. I love a, a holy crap, like they look at each other and the worlds align themselves. But I also love watching like a friendship develop. I love watching like that, that like, I guess kind of like slow and steady too. Um, mm-hmm. I just love that. <laughs> I just love them. Um, Anywho, moving on. Um, I feel like we would be remiss if we didn't talk about Rasputin himself. He, absolutely. <laughs> he is a huge part of this. Yes. So Grigory Rasputin was obviously, as we all know, a real person. Um, he lived from January 1869 to December 1916. And he was like a mystic and like a faith healer people had a very 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 love hate relationship with him there were so many myths and legends around him um he there was a lot right there's a lot of controversy with him um and a lot of it was actually touched on in the book so i thought that that was so rad um Part of it was the fact that, like, he had taken the family, um, the SARS family. So there was also concern, obviously, like, with um, Nicholas II, that Rasputin was way too involved, that he was, that he had way too much of a hand in influencing, like, the royal family. And um, so... Alexei, the son who was next in line for like the throne was a hemophiliac and that's pretty much why Rasputin was at the court to begin with right like he was the healer for Alexei and so there was with people who are like faith healers or or people who dive into the more holistic approaches there's always going to be people who like okay well what's really going on and so <laughs> there's there's so much that went around Rasputin and the author of this book kind of played on all of them. One of the things most known about Rasputin was the fact that he quote unquote wouldn't die, right? Like, so he was stabbed by someone, he was shot, and then um, he like when he was shot like someone shot him in the head and then he still didn't die so then they like threw him in the water and then he he like died because he drowned so <laughs> there's a lot that um is kind of mysterious about Rasputin um and she kind of plays into all of it she plays into the idea that he was you know a rapist and um a sexual deviant um all kinds of stuff i here's the thing is like if fress Putin was a terrible person <laughs> i feel bad that he's villainized but at the same time the the fact that she was able to take all of his um all of the mystery surrounding him and kind of like put it all into one character I think she did a fantastic job. For 
fucking sure. Because, <laughs> okay. <sighs> the way that she spun it to make him seem so graceful, so great, so... Like... I don't know, just wonderful. And then she just started spinning that web. And I'm like, wait, where where the hell is she going with this? And then I was like, oh, now I get where she's going with it. And I think she re- really, really did a good job with spinning that, making me believe it, and also still staying on topic with some of the history like you said yeah yeah absolutely and it's kind of like she took the same path with the character as what happened in real life right like so like at first he's great he's wonderful he's the he you know he's mysterious and kind of um supernatural in a way um and then everyone loves him because he's the answer to everyone's prayers and then it's like okay but what's really going on here and then when he, when mm-hmm. chapter 34 hits, you know what's really going on here. <laughs> yeah. The, the way that that, it, like, everything started to speed up and just, like, snowball it, during that time frame, that, those chapters, oof. Yeah. Ooh. I, I kept, like, stop it. No <laughs> way. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Abs- I love, um... I love the part when Anastasia was walking through the portrait hall with her grandmother, Minnie, and they were looking at all the pictures of their ancestors. There was so much history that was like just jam packed in this book, but I feel like it was done in a way that was not exposition-y, right? Like, you know, I mean, they are kind of like walking through the hall and like talking about all the people and it's, it very much kind of is exposition, but it didn't feel that way. It felt very organic, like we were walking through the halls with our grandmother, you know, and talking about all of our family history. I could see that. So cross-referencing here from the Disney movie to the book, um, her grandmother gives her a jewelry box. And so in the movie this jewelry box is their memory like the this is supposed to reunite them in paris and there's a certain song that plays and it's really freaking cute and in the book it's still a music box per se except it shows a memory of one perfect day and i thought that was the most romantic freaking thing because her grandmother had this perfect day with her husband and oh my heart no it but the fact that it like it wasn't exactly the same but the way that it translated over from the book to the movie uh like i said i know it's not the same thing but it was still a, i love the fact that that memento meant so much in both and i i don't honestly know too much about the reality of it i don't know if that music box was a real thing but i just love the concept behind that and to have that one memory that's locked in there until you choose to re-record something else over it that you figure is the perfect thing is just awesome i actually don't know if that has any basis in reality either but i'm i'm really glad that there was some kind of um overlap between the the disney version oh there was oh no there was definitely quite a few was things there? but yeah I don't like that the bat was named Bat and not Bartok, but I mean, that's just me. <laughs> he was my favorite thing. He was sassy. Yeah. The bat wasn't really mentioned too often. I mean, it was it was mentioned a couple times, but not really that. Artemis was mentioned all the time. 
Yeah, but she was a freaking beast. Yeah. So I can understand that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I love, I love a historical fiction, and I think that this one was done perfectly. Like, so they talk about so many events and so many people and so many things, and like, it's not just a passing thing, right? Like, so they talk about like. Of course, they talk about Bloody Sunday and the October Revolution or the Bolshevik Revolution, um, which basically like began the it was that was like it. Right. Like that was the moment that kind of like turned the people against um, the family. Um, like the reason why I love historical fiction is because it gives humanity to the stories we've always been told. Right. So, like, imagine if we didn't have cameras to capture the genius of Freddie Mercury or, like, Hunter S. Thompson or, you know, like, incredible wacky people, not not wacky necessarily, but, like, these people that are larger than life, like, what kind of stories would they tell about, like, Ozzy Osbourne if we didn't have actual things, you know, there would be no proof of him biting off the head. Gross. <laughs> um, but like, I'm sorry. Like, what would they, you know, what would be said? Like, they, they include Anna Pavlova, and like, while some things were changed, the quote, get my swan costume ready, like, that was a real quote. And it made me like tear up when I read it. And I'm pretty sure that she made a mention of um, Emma, is it, I think it's Livery? Livery? who was a ballerina that died during rehearsal when her gown caught fire on the stage. And like with historical fiction, we can read something for entertainment and say like, holy shit, is that real? And then if we're interested enough, then we go and we look it up and we can see like the actual history, you know, like I didn't know about the Empress that made a castle out of ice and then made her jester get married in it and live in it. You know, like there's so many people that like, say that they hated learning history in school but like what if it had been presented in a way that humanized people instead of like was just a list of facts there was a family this is what happened and then they died like there's so much more to it and I feel like people miss out because we present history in a way that's not really digestible I love that you say it like that because I honestly hated history and you know, that's why, like, the Romanovs, I really didn't know very much about them. So I obviously looked into it a little bit, but at the same time, like, some of the things that you even said, I I was unaware of. So it it definitely makes me appreciate it more because I'm learning and I don't have to be bored while doing it. So that's just me. Well, I'm like think about all the different people like and the incredible things that happened the incredible people that lived like okay I don't th I this is just a me thing right but like I it it's like incredibly sad for someone to live a life and then not be remembered right and it's, it's like they never happened and there's so many people who did incredible amazing things that we just don't know of because their whole life was reduced to one sentence in a textbook you know or like mm. wasn't included at all there's so many people that weren't included at all you know mm -hmm. I don't know I just it's it's weird to me I mean time is weird to me anyway I've told you a thousand times I don't believe in time but <laughs> like Oh, I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I think history is amazing. I think we just go about it the wrong way. I think so, too. Just like math. I think they go about that the wrong way. Too. <laughs> this new math is just awful. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they go about it now the wrong way. How are you going to teach kids how to do something and then the parents not know how to do it? You know what I mean? Okay, here you go, child. Oh, go off home and do your homework, but don't ask bother asking anyone for help because they can't help you oh you got the same answer it doesn't matter you can't do it that way you have to do it this way 
Yeah, you have to make little boxes to make sure you you can add and subtract. That's the dumbest <laughs> shit I've ever heard of in my life. Oh, it was the dumbest shit I've ever seen. People's brains don't work the same way. Like, people need to do things differently. Like, they have to see things differently. And yes, they might get the, the same answer. Or, and, like, they can get the same answer doing things differently. Like you don't have to do everything exactly the same way as everyone else does all the time. That's the most asinine thing I've ever heard of in my life. Anyway, Jen, did you have a favorite quote? <laughs> so I had a few favorite quotes and I'm not going to read all of them because there, there was just a lot of things that she not only worded well, but just were very important but one was time was a river ever changing eroding even its own banks i know you hate time but i don't hate it i just don't see it the same way other people do yeah at one point there uh someone had passed away and um someone had said it hurts because we love him (laughs) that's the balance of life hard as it is to accept a heart open to joy is a heart vulnerable to sorrow there's no family without loss no love without pain <laughs> i wrote that and, one down too oh it was just such a beautiful moment and such a beautiful quote and i just i could not stop what i was doing fast enough to make sure that was highlighted yeah yeah, that one was pretty that one was pretty rough. Yeah. Um Oh, and the man who waits for some day waits all his life. Did you have that I one did. too? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> why? Because we're the same person, that's why. Oh well, yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> okay, I last one. Keep honor, build glory. We carve those words on our saddles. It meant that glory should never cost your honor. Boom. And that's that. Do you have any favorite quotes that I didn't steal? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I do. So ones that, um, some that you did not steal. Um, Anything lovely by daylight is even better by night. I love that quote. I might get it tattooed on my forehead. I'm not entirely sure. I actually, I really love that quote because like, I love everything usually after the sun goes down. Like beaches are rad in the daytime when the sun's out, but I love them at night. Going in the pool, anything water related essentially. No, like literally everything for me I love during the day is like made 10 times better by nighttime. Yeah, you're a closet vampire. I get that. (laughs) This one time that me and the family went out and did something and like, I I was like, it was in the sun. But of course, I wear all black and I have my makeup like um, basically like got Mick, which is a drag queen. And you should I'll send you a picture of him later. But um, (laughs) so (laughs) my brother goes, oh, look, Dracula's daughter is here. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's awesome yeah <laughs> um so and then there's magic and faith is not as different as you might think which is right up my alley um because of reasons um and then one quote that made me really sad was boys don't stay close to their sisters as they get older i was like you shut your mouth mama romanov <laughs> um, stupid <laughs> oh man and then I really dug um, when Anastasia says stay alive please I don't know why that was so sweet like it's it was so much like I don't know you know how like people say cute little things like be safe she was like, no, I'm, I literally only need one thing from you. I just need you to stay alive. Like, stay alive, please. I thought it was so sweet. So, listen, she, she, oh, how did she put it? 
Oh, uh, she says, I've never asked you for anything before, so I may as well start with the hardest and most important thing. And then Ooh. she says, stay alive. And, and I was <laughs> like, oh, that is so fucking sweet. I like, know. how dare you? But, oh, that little honey. Ugh. I know. Um. Ugh. There was one point where he says you're just you're the same as the rest of them. And I had like an instant flashback when like Henry was saying to Drew Barrymore, you're you you're just like them in uh in Ever After. And like I Ugh No, I hate that. I hate that. You're not just like I'm not just like them. I'm different I promise. <laughs> you just like them um and then the very last bit of the book very very last bit you're a king of nothing if your people are miserable Mm -hmm. a boom i dig that so much yeah and it's like it's honestly it's so true because like there are managers of jobs who treat their people like crap and like work them like crazy and then sit there and take all the credit for everything or even like specifically that there's you know kingdoms where the leaders think that they're the best thing in the world or like they're on top of the world or whatever and like their people are suffering and they're starving and it's like no you you get nothing you cannot pass go your people are like in pain and hurt Well, and that's the thing. Sometimes it takes just listening to one person saying, hey, maybe we should do this or what if we do that? Sometimes that one voice is so important. And uh, like there are certain aspects of my job where I can say this isn't right or this is not going to work. And they made it a point to do something while I was on vacation that they know I would have said, this isn't going to work. This is not a smart idea. <laughs> it's it, If it falls on deaf ears, then that's a them problem because it's not going to be a me problem when it blows up. I wasn't here for it. I, that's such Absolutely. a bad thing for me to do. <laughs> it's a horrible thing for no. me to do sometimes leadership needs to learn the hard way if enough things fail then maybe they start to listen right jen what was your overall opinion of anastasia written by sophie lark i definitely recommend reading it i recommend not trying to read it in like four days but you know (laughs) or seven yeah that was kind of rough Uh uh-huh Oh god, that was so rough. Uh but I I do highly recommend reading it. It's an interesting read. I enjoyed it and Damien could have gotten it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just so everyone knows, I I know that like Anastasia, real Anastasia died when she was 17. Um things are different in the book, so we're not talking about like a 17 year old boy god no gross gross yeah okay fun fact i don't know why i just thought of this but i named my baby from the family development in high school damien did you remember that yeah no yep oh yeah we had to do a whole overnight with the baby and everything Oh, that damn thing fucking kept crying. It's awful. <laughs> Real babies don't cry like that, I swear. <laughs> Anyways, but um no, Damien was just like I I think he he ended up being my favorite character just because of how humble he was, but at the same time he was resilient. He was very smart, but he was also stubborn and didn't want to show emotions, but yet there was just no avoiding it at times with him and i think that made him so much stronger of a man yeah 
And I absolutely dug that. I love it. The strong, silent type. I love it. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> but what about you? What did you think? I loved it. I, I don't think I could have loved this book anymore. I think that it was... um. Like I said, it blended fact and fiction in a way that was like entertaining and informative, which I love because, well, I've already said why I love it. I just, I thought it was great. I thought it was fantastic. It was written beautifully. It was a long book. It was a chunky book, but it was, we were invested in the characters and their story. Um, I thought it was fantastic. I would 100% read it again. Yeah, for sure. I'm so glad I have the physical copy. (laughs) Yeah. So this book was written by Sophie Lark, and she is also the author of some other books, such as Brutal Prince, which has like strawberries on the front. And I've seen the this book on like Amazon before. It's like you might like this book, and I feel like I might like this book. Um, but she's uh, she's also written a ton of others, like um, Kingmakers, like we said, um, the there are no saints and there is no devil. And I feel like I've been sleeping on Miss Sophie Lark over here, um, because I thought it was fantastic, and I'm down. Da- I'm totally down to read more books from her. For sure, <laughs> she's. So I, I'm really, like you said earlier, I'm really interested to see how her dark romance books are because with this book, she could be up there with Carrie Lake for me. With this book? Yeah. Like, as far as, like, just as an author. Oh, oh, but... oh, like writing style and all that. Yeah. Gotcha. So now if we go into the dark romance and she's anything like carrie lake well sorry carrie it might be a sidestep or at least like a side by side (laughs) but we shall see yeah i um yeah i don't know i really dug it i'm I'm looking forward to see more stuff from her so if you go on to sophielark.com s-o-p-h-i-e-l-a-r-k.com you will see a beautiful special edition of Brutal Prince um, with it's like hardcover and like has, you know, full color illustrations. It's stunning. Um, You can also on her website, see all of her different books and buy them. And, you know, that's rad. Uh, Most of her stuff is on her Instagram, though. She's very active on her Instagram, which is Sophie underscore Lark underscore author. She does not post on threads. Um, And I don't know if she has any other socials. It's she's pretty active on on Instagram. But yeah, she posts so much. She posts about her books, about her family. Um, She has a gorgeous family. I would definitely say check her out. All right, Jen, can you tell everyone what we are reading next week? So next week we are reading Sky's End by Mark Gregson. Yay! Yay is right. I feel like we've been wanting to read this book forever. We have. So the funny thing is, is we actually, when we first originally joined threads we saw the cover of his book when he released like the uh the cover art and we were like totally hyped up about it and then it got released and became like a number one bestseller and it's like fucking popping off right now but we've been like we've been wanting to read it literally since he before it was even published so (laughs) kudos to him for even like getting to this point because it was literally an instant new york times bestseller so kudos to him but yeah i can't wait to dig into this one i know i'm really excited all right everyone well thank you so much for listening to this episode of devilish bookworms i know that it was a long one 
but uh, it was a long ass book, so it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, facts. <laughs> And um, give us a follow on any social media. All of our socials are at Devilish Bookworms, Threads, Facebook, Instagram, um, TikTok. We're most active on Threads. Oh, YouTube. Yep. We even have a YouTube channel. We even have a YouTube. Um, And, (laughs) well, say hi. And we will see you all next week. Bye. Bye.